So, for this part of the video, we are going to be looking at something known as DNA replication. And DNA replication is just basically the process of making an identical copy of a DNA molecule, where you have one DNA molecule and suddenly, lo and behold, you have two DNA molecules. And the DNA molecules are identical in, in which they have the same base sequence. So what that means is, if you look at it, to just basically draw that out again, okay, you have the original DNA molecule, and when DNA replication occurs, it produces two identical DNA molecules with two identical base sequences, no matter what. So why do cells actually carry out DNA replication, by the way? Very simple. It is a preparation to prepare the cell for mitosis or meiosis. It happens during the S phase, if you remember, where the cell has to double its amount of DNA during the S phase. All right, this is in chapter 5. Um, so that it's able to undergo cell division, whether mitosis or meiosis. Uh, we've seen mitosis in the previous chapter, which is chapter 5. We will look at meiosis in chapter 16 in A2. All right? But no matter whether mitosis or meiosis, before it undergoes the nuclear division, the amount of DNA has to double through a process known as DNA replication. Now, DNA replication, it is a highly complicated process. So let's simplify it first. Let's start with the principle, okay? The principle is as follows, the basics at least, okay? We have one original DNA molecule. It unwinds, and when it unwinds, the hydrogen bonds will then break. And when the hydrogen bonds break, the strands are then separated. From each other. The two original or template strands are separated. The reason why we call it template is because the template strands are used as a reference to make the new DNA strand. It's as simple as that. Because if you want to make identical DNA molecules, you kind of first have to understand how the original looks like. And the original strands are referred to as the template strands. Now, what will happen then is the so new DNA nucleotides, which can be DNA nucleotides with bases A, T, C, or G, they will form complementary base pairings with the template strands, where A will always pair up with T and G will always pair up with C. As you can see there. And what exactly happens is this, I'm just showing you what happens over there. That's how the complementary base pairing happens. If you notice in the template strands, they have the phosphodiester bonds, but the new strands do not have the phosphodiester bonds yet. So the phosphodiester bonds will need to be formed after that. And once the phosphodiester bonds form in the new strands, that is when we basically get two new DNA molecules. This form of replication is basically referred to as something called semi-conservative replication, where the new DNA molecule is made up of one original or template strand and one new strand. What that means is, for example, Imagine if the two black lines are the template strands, the black lines, the black lines will separate, okay, and then it forms a new strand which I've colored in red. Okay, O means original and N means new. And as you can see, the two new DNA molecules is made up of one original strand and one new strand. That is the meaning of semi-conservative replication. So this, base, this is basically the principle of DNA replication. This is just the basics. 
Now comes the more problematic part. Now, this is going to be a bit of a long chapter, so you might have to watch it and rewatch it. And I'm just going to say this. I may not do a good job teaching this uh, by a video format. Usually when I teach my students, it is something that I'll have to go through again and again until they get it right. So uh, if you don't understand my lesson on this, try to leave a comment. I'll try to answer your questions as soon as possible. So without wasting time, the first thing that needs to happen to the DNA molecule is it needs to uncoil. And when it uncoils, you can actually see me labeling the direction of the DNA, the five primes and three primes, all right? And when it, it will then have to unwind. Now, what do I mean by unwind? There is an enzyme called the helicase enzyme. And what it does is it will basically unwind the DNA like a zipper where it starts from, for example, in this case, it starts at the bottom. And as it moves along the DNA, it will start separating the DNA strand at the bottom. The hydrogen bonds are broken. It does not unwind the DNA separately. It's kind of like a thing that starts uh, bit by bit, basically. So it unwinds the DNA a little bit and separates the strands, as you can see over there. I've highlighted, the parts where I've highlighted basically shows that the basis of the template strands are now exposed. Now, if you remember the principle, the basics that we saw earlier, the template strands have to be exposed so that new DNA nucleotides can go and bind to it. Now, so when we have the new DNA nucleotides, they will form something called complementary base pairings with the template strands, which have been exposed. So that's good. Now, here is where it becomes a little bit confusing. In the new strand, they have to form the phosphodiester bonds, the red color ones, by the way. And to form the phosphodiester bonds, we need an enzyme called DNA polymerase, which is also a type, uh, it's a type of enzyme as well. Now, the function of DNA polymerase is to basically form the new strands, which are, which is the, which is to link together the red colored DNA nucleotides. And if you remember in an earlier video, I did mention that new nucleotides are added in a five prime to three prime direction. Okay, so if we were to zoom in, you must understand that on the new strand, I've labeled the new strand, it's going to be five prime on one side, it's going to be three prime on the other side because they act in anti-parallels with their template strands. So they're always anti-parallel to their template strands, right? So if the template strand has a three prime, the new strand has a five prime next to it. And if the template strand has a five prime, uh, the other side has a three prime, right? So in this case, the new nucleotides are added in a five to three direction. So I've shown you the arrow in which the DNA polymerase has to move, okay? On one side, the DNA polymerase will have to move from the bottom to top, but on the other side, it has to move from the top to bottom. So the DNA polymerase basically moves in this case, it just, Yep, it just moves and it forms the new strand. And for the other DNA polymerase, it starts from the top and it moves all the way down the bottom to form the new strand. Now, some students will be like, I still don't get this again. Let's try this again, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw out another DNA molecule, a bit of a longer one so we can see it clearly. Helicase goes in, unwinds the DNA, exposes the strand, template strands, new DNA nucleotides will form complementary base pairings with a template strand. I'm going to label the direction of the new DNA nucleotide. Three prime on one side, five prime at the top, 
5 prime at the bottom, 3 prime at the top. There we go. It's anti-parallel, remember? Okay. Now, let me circle to show you how it's anti-parallel to each other over that. Okay. Just as a reminder. Now, remember, the DNA polymerase will have to add the nucleotides in a 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Therefore, on one strand, it moves in the direction in the arrow, and on the other strand, it moves from the top to bottom. And that is when it forms the strands as follows. So going back to the original DNA molecule, right, the helicase continues moving upwards, and once it just basically moves all the way until the end, the entire DNA has been separated, right? And we can see the existing new strands that have been synthesized. Now, more DNA nucleotides will form complementary base pairings with the exposed, with the template strands. Here's the interesting thing. The DNA polymerase on one side just basically has to keep going because it's moving from a 5' prime to 3' prime direction on the new strand. So it has no issues, right? Because that's the way it was originally moving anyway. But on the other strand, it can't suddenly decide to reverse if it wanted to. It just cannot do that because it's supposed to add it from 5 to 3 on the new strand. So what it has to do is it has to detach from the DNA, go to the top, and then start adding the nucleotides again. So it works in a slightly different way. So let's look at this again in detail. Let's go back to the strand. Okay, we have that strand. So let's, let's try to look at it again. So we have a DNA, okay. The helicase unwinds it a little bit. New DNA nucleotides form complementary base pairings with the template strand. The DNA polymerase adds the nucleotides in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction for the new strands. Okay, for the new strands, it adds it from a 5 to 3 direction. It moves all the way up for one side and it moves all the way down on the other side. And in this case, it forms the phosphodiester bonds. Okay. And then what happens? The helicase continues to unwind the template strand. New DNA nucleotides basically form complementary base pairings. Okay. And the DNA polymerase on one side just keeps going on. It has no problems keep going, uh, going on, okay? But on the other side, it cannot reverse, as I told you. What it has to do, it has to, it has to detach from the DNA, go back to the top, and then move downwards again. The DNA continues to unwind. And the DNA polymerase on the left side still has no problem. That's because that's the direction it was going. But on the right side, the DNA polymerase will have to, again, detach, reattach, move its way back downwards. That's a problem. And last but not least, until the DNA has been completely unwound, the DNA polymerase on the left has no problems. But the DNA polymerase on the right has to work a bit harder has to detach and reattach to the DNA and attach the new nucleotides in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. I've highlighted certain parts, as you can see in the yellow, the yellow color highlights, that basically represent certain gaps where the DNA polymerase had to separate and reattach. So it, the DNA polymerase on the left attaches the new strand perfectly but the DNA polymerase on the right does not attach it perfectly. There are certain gaps, as you can see over there. 
highlighted in yellow. The new strand on the left is leaf. The new strand on the left is referred to as something called the leading strand because the formation of the new strand is continuous. But the new strand on the right is referred to as something called lagging strand because the new strand is fragmented. Lagging meaning to say it's a bit slower, it has a bit of problems with the strand. So much so, there is a name given to the fragments. And the fragments are referred to as something called the Okazaki fragments. Um, the Okazaki fragments are named as such because they were actually discovered by a husband and wife scientist uh, named Suneko and Reiji Okazaki. So that's why uh, it was named as such. So if you discovered something, you will probably get to uh, have it named after you which is bragging rights, come on, okay? So these are the Okazaki fragments on the other side. So going back to the original DNA that we had, you can also see the Okazaki fragments uh, on the other side, right? On, on the new DNA, on, on, one, on one strand on the left, there are no Okazaki fragments because the DNA polymerase was continuous. But on the other new strand, the DNA polymerase was not continuous, okay? So there are the Okazaki fragments, and that is where ligase basically comes in. It is just basically an enzyme, and what DNA ligase does is DNA ligase just goes towards the fragment. It will find the fragment over there and form the phosphodiester bonds between the fragments. That's basically what it has to do. And lo and behold, this is where we get two new DNA molecules. So so, in summary, let's look at it again. I'm just going to draw out a DNA molecule, the original strand, label it 5' prime and 3'. Prime. First, helicase unwinds part of the DNA molecule. The template strand is exposed. New DNA nucleotides form complementary base pairings with the exposed template strands. And DNA polymerase will basically add the nucleotides in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. So on one side, the DNA polymerase is moving, in this case, moving upwards. And on the other side, it's moving downwards. In, in reality, there's no up and down here. Yeah? Okay, I'm just in my diagram, there's an up and down, by the way, yeah. So, um, and then the DNA will just basically continue to unwind, okay, bit by bit. And on one side, the DNA polymerase has no problems. Just moving upwards on a 5 prime to 3 prime direction, okay. But on the other side, it has to detach from the DNA and reattach and form the phosphodiester bonds. And this process keeps going on until on one side we have something referred to as leading strands and on one side we have something called lagging strands. We will know that the lagging strand will have something called Okazaki fragments because of the behavior of the DNA polymerase where it had to detach, reattach, detach, reattach, detach, reattach. Uh, to form the phosphodiester bonds. In this case, that is where a last enzyme will come in, which is known as DNA ligase. And DNA ligase over here will just go through the fragments, find the gaps, and just form the phosphodiester bonds. And thus, a continuous new strand is formed. And there we go. We have two new DNA molecules. This is how DNA replication takes place.